So as a former competitive pitcher, I am all too familiar with the brushback pitch. So here's the scenario. A strong, confident batter steps up to the plate. My job as a pitcher is to strike her out, and I know she's an excellent hitter. I have a whole arsenal of pitches, a fastball, a changeup, a curveball, and a drop. I decide to go with a fastball for my first pitch, high and inside, one that forces her to jump back from the plate. My goal is to intimidate her and to strip away some of her confidence. With her confidence shaken and her mind out of the game, I can strike her out. Brushback pitches can come in many forms in STEM, challenging subject matter, a tough exam, research failures, or an intern uh, internship rejection letter. Being on the receiving end of these events can shake anyone's confidence. As a female in a typically male-dominated STEM field, I've encountered an additional type of brushback pitch, which is gender bias. So I want to share some of my story with you today. It's one that contains hits, strikeouts, and brushback pitches. I hope it encourages anyone, especially young women considering STEM careers, to step up to the plate, keep your eye on the ball, and always keep your head in the game. So I grew up in a small steel town in West Virginia. I was fascinated with the night sky from a young age, and I used to love watching space shuttle launches on TV with my dad. I was intrigued by NASA's space shuttle program, so I decided I was going to become an aerospace engineer. So I took math and science courses in high school, and I was fortunate to have some pretty spectacular teachers. As I was getting ready to head off to college to study engineering, my favorite teacher shared some personal wisdom with me. He said, remember, you will have to work twice as hard to be considered half as good. But you're as good as any I've seen, and I know you can do it. Although I didn't understand what he meant at the time when he said it, I later learned that he was referring to the different challenges I would face as a woman in a typically male-dominated engineering field. So I went off to college, and I pursued degrees in both mechanical and aerospace engineering. I was excited to start this new chapter of my life and embark on this journey of learning how to make things fly. My freshman year was a fun experience. I learned a lot about engineering, and I made some new friends. There were some bumps along the way. I found out very quickly advanced chemistry, not my forte. And I had smoke billowing out of my circuits lab more times than I'm going to admit today. As a sophomore in college, I had this opportunity to be an undergraduate research assistant on a project for a professor. I was so excited to have this additional opportunity, and I worked hard on this project all year. At the end of the year, I had this chance to present this research at the state capitol. And before I left, my professor and mentor at the time, he called me into his office, where he said, you should wear a skirt to the presentation. It'll attract the men, and they'll come over and listen to you. Ew, there it was. It was a brushback pitch. That comment made the 19-year-old me uncomfortable. I started to doubt myself. Why was I there? Did he just bring me onto his team so I could attract people to his research? At the time, the comment shook me up, like a good brushback pitch will. But looking back, I only feel frustration. It's highly offensive and completely inappropriate to suggest to any woman, especially a 19-year-old who's trying to become a serious professional, that she should use looks to get people to take an interest in her work. It's also offensive to men to even subtly suggest that they wouldn't be interested in the technical details. So, how did I handle this? Well, I defiantly and proudly wore a pantsuit to the presentation, and there were plenty of people interested in hearing about the work. That brushback pitch stripped away some of my confidence. In the end, I decided that I wasn't going to give up on research, so I decided to try again with a different professor. I wasn't going to let that brushback pitch take my head out of the game. So for my next project, I worked with a team to design, build, and fly an experiment on NASA's Weightless Wonder aircraft. If you're unfamiliar with this aircraft, it's one that flies in a parabolic motion to simulate about 25 seconds of microgravity as it flies over the top of each parabola. They use this technique to train astronauts and prepare them for the zero-gravity environment of space. With this project, I learned how to write a proposal in support of securing research funding. I learned how to design and build an experiment from the ground up, conduct data analysis, and capture it in a final report. These are all key aspects of being a good engineer, and I was getting this real-world experience through this opportunity. 
the best part of all was I got to experience weightlessness like an astronaut. And it was hands down one of the best moments of my life. I'm so glad that I didn't let that first project experience deter me from doing what I had set out to do, which was to conduct good research. I learned how to design and build an experiment from the ground up, and it wouldn't have existed in its present form without my unique contributions to the team, and that's a really cool feeling. We invented something, and for me it wasn't just a hit. It was a home run. I was so energized by this experience that I started to apply to internships. I submitted several applications to companies, and the first company that I interviewed with did not select me. Another brushback pitch, or perhaps a strikeout. I walked into that interview. It was eight hours long, it was intensive, and I simply didn't have a good outing. I let my nerves get the best of me, and I failed to draw out some of the key aspects of my resume that I had hoped to highlight. I was really disappointed and hard on myself. I kept replaying it over and over in my head, thinking about what could I have done differently? After a few weeks, I decided if you're going to keep replaying it, at least do something useful with it. So I reflected. I paid attention to the types of questions I faced. I took notes. I learned from my failure. I decided that my next interview would go differently. And it just so happened that my next interview was for my dream internship with NASA. And I walked into that one feeling prepared. Nervous, but prepared. I ended up getting that internship, and I spent the next two summers working on a project to explore Jupiter's moon, Europa. It was during this internship that I discovered my passion for control theory and autonomous vehicles. And this was an inflection point in my career. After this internship, I started enrolling in courses on autopilots and flight controls. It even led me to an internship with Boeing, where I worked in the flight controls group for the 787 Dreamliner. If I would have let that brushback pitch of not getting that first internship paralyze me into inaction and had been too afraid to interview for another one, I might not have worked at NASA or Boeing. I might not have discovered my passion for flight controls, and my career would look completely different than it does today. Every perceived failure has an opportunity for lessons learned. And as long as you learn something, it's not a failure. Keep your eye on the ball and your head in the game, and don't be afraid to step back up to the plate after a strikeout. I was so inspired by all these experiences I was having that I decided to pursue my PhD in aerospace engineering. I worked in a lab where we conducted flight testing with small jet aircraft, and I felt more connected to aerospace engineering than I ever had before. I felt like I had felt or found my true passion. Which leads me to the final brushback pitch story that I want to share with you today. All of this hard work through college helped me to receive several accolades that I'm still really proud of. I remember receiving one award and a male colleague said to me, it must have been because you're a girl. I remember receiving a second recognition and a colleague said a similar remark and he added that they must have had a quota to meet. Honestly, these were the hardest brushback pitches of them all. What they were implying was a more deserving male did not receive this award because they had to lower the bar and reserve a spot for a female. Of course, it couldn't have had anything to do with the late hours I was consistently putting in at the library. Of course, I couldn't have earned these honors. They simply must have been handed to me because I was a female in a male-dominated field. This sent the wrong message to me as a woman in engineering. It signaled to me that no matter how hard I worked to prove myself, there would be some who would assume my successes were given to me as opposed to my earning them. I could work twice as hard, but some would still consider me to be half as good. The words of my very wise high school teacher finally were making sense to me. So I shared some of these experiences because these individual occurrences aren't typically enough to push someone away from their passion. These individual brushback pitches aren't enough to take someone completely out of the game. It's the sum of the parts that can create an environment where a woman may start to question if she belongs in STEM, especially after the gender-related brushback pitches. When those comments were said to me, I was already being really hard on myself. I wanted people to see me as a competent and dependable engineer, and comments like that seemed to call into question if they did. 
what if they find out I'm not good at engineering? So to combat that fear, I became a perfectionist. I would beat myself up if I didn't get a perfect exam score, and I would be hard on myself if a flight test didn't turn out exactly as I had planned. And trust me, they never do. I later learned that I suffer from what is known as imposter syndrome. And according to the psychologist who first described it in the 70s, occurs among high achievers who are unable to internalize and accept their success. And they live with this fear that others will eventually unmask them as a fraud. As it turns out, perfectionism and the imposter syndrome go hand in hand. I didn't want anyone to know what was going on underneath this finely crafted image that I had worked so hard to project. The fact that I was dealing with these imposter-like feelings only complicated matters when I was dealt a brushback pitch. I'll admit that when I was graduating, I questioned if I would be able to be impactful in the aerospace industry. I considered different routes, like pursuing an MBA. I let the sum of those brushback pitches take my head out of the game. And with the imposter syndrome, I felt like a, bas a person in the batter's box who didn't want anyone to find out she couldn't hit. In the end, I almost made the biggest mistake of my life. It took months of self-reflection, but I realized that I was getting ready to defend my PhD dissertation. So I knew my stuff. All of the training and the hard work had led up to this moment. It was essentially my world series. And what would the little girl who fell in love with aerospace engineering so long ago think if I gave up on our dream? I couldn't let these brushback pitches write my story. I belong in the game. So I'm proud to say that I now work at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, the nation's largest university-affiliated research center focused on cutting-edge research and development to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. I serve as a senior engineer and supervisor who has the chance to mentor staff. I feel blessed to be a part of something greater than myself, supporting our nation's air and missile defense programs. I serve as a visiting professor at Johns Hopkins University, where I get to teach and hopefully mentor the next generation of brilliant engineering minds. I wake up every day energized to go to work, and I am so happy that I got my head back in the game. Sometimes I look back and think about how I got here, and ultimately, my commitment to my dreams was stronger than any brushback pitch that could be thrown my way. I took chances and I stepped outside of my comfort zone. I learned from my failures. There were times I doubted myself and questioned if I belonged. I still suffer from the imposter syndrome. I get nervous when I teach new material to my students. All of these fears and these setbacks are worth it, and they're part of the adventure. When we see successful people, we often see the finely crafted story, the resume highlights. We don't often see the brushback pitches and the strikeouts, which are the character building events. So to all of you here today, I hope you walk away with a message that it's okay to fail. In fact, I encourage you to get comfortable with it. Failure is the hallmark of every highly successful person, so always try to take a lesson away from it and don't be too hard on yourself throughout that process. And to the young women who are considering STEM careers, all I can say is this. Implicit biases against women in STEM continue to persist. However, the positive experiences far outweigh those brushback pitches. There may be times when you doubt yourself and question if you belong. You do belong, and we need your unique perspectives and contributions in STEM. There may be times as I said, you may question yourself. I, I encourage you to remain firm and committed to your passions. Don't let anyone strip that away from you. I have met some of my very best friends through engineering. It has allowed me to travel the world. I have flown in microgravity like an astronaut, learned how to pilot a helicopter, and I get to have a significant impact in my current role. It has been more fun and rewarding than anything I could have ever imagined when I started out on this journey. So don't let the brushback pitches stop you. Keep your eye on the ball and your head in the game because it may be the greatest game you ever play. Thank you.